Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata, where as always, you guessed it, I am here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick things off with a very interesting look into TSMC's 5NM node. Now you might be wondering, hang on, why are you talking about 5NM? Because we're only just now seeing high-end products for the 7NM process come out into the world. We haven't even seen 7NM desktop Ryzen yet, but TSMC is going to be having 5NM chips come out of production in the first half of 2020. Now, as I've discussed before, even though 5NM chips are going to be in volume production in 2020, as I just said, Zen 3, which of course is, got, is going to be following Zen 2, are only going to be using 7NM+. Plus. So they're actually going to be kind of operating a little bit like Zen+, Plus, I suppose you could say. So we're not going to be seeing 5NM Ryzen until Zen 4, most likely, whenever that's going to be released. It's, of course, would be a guess. But I have some very interesting comments from the TSMC CEO, who said, quote, with the best density performance power and the best transistor technology, we expect most of our customers who are using 7NM today will adopt 5NM. Now, just to confuse things even further, there's a 6NM kicking around, and it does kind of fill the gap in between 7NM and 5NM, because there is a pretty significant gap in density between 5NM and 7NM. And again, the TSMC CEO said, quote, the number N6 and N5, which is how they refer to 5NM and 6NM, but they actually still have a big gap in 5 compared with N7, actually. The logic density increases by 80%, N6 compared with N7 is only 18%. So you can see there's a big difference in that logic density and transistor performance also. And so, as a result, the total power consumption in the chip is lower in the N5. It's a lot of benefit if you move into N5. So, to kind of translate that a little bit, because obviously you've got their N6 and N5 and all that, long story short, essentially, is when you go from 7NM to 5NM, the logic density increases by 80%, and 6NM... And 7NM, it's only a difference of 18%. So there's a significant gap in density between the two, that being 5NM and 7NM. So as I said, 6NM kind of slots perfectly in between the two. So you might wonder, okay, that all sounds great, but why would you not just go straight from 7NM to 5? Because as I already said, 5NM is coming out in 2020, right? As a, as a company such as AMD, why would you make the decision to go with 6NM? Well, it actually is closer to the original 7NM design, as is 7NM+. Plus. They're both based on the original 7NM design, whereas 5NM is basically a whole new node again. So it's kind of like going from 14M to 12NM. There's improvements, but they're similar enough where there's not a huge amount of work from a company such as AMD to produce a chip on that architecture when it was originally designed for, say, 14NM to go down to 12NM. And the TSMC CEO said here, quote, the ecosystems are ready and equally mature with N6 because we're 100% compatible. Of course, you still have to do some modification. If you want to shrink your die, you have to rerun your timing, closure, those kind of things. But it's still much easier to go from N7, go to N6, rather than N7 to go to N5. So it's highly possible that we're going to be seeing Zen 3 on 7NM+, and then we might see a Zen 3 Plus that's on 6NM, and then Zen 4 is going to be 5NM. Of course, that is all pure speculation. But TSMC does seem very confident that the people using 7NM currently, like AMD, because obviously they're using it for Radeon 7, as well as Ryzen, will be making the jump over to 5NM. It's definitely going to be interesting to see the architecture that AMD choose to use after we get done with Zen 3. Speaking of Ryzen, however, we actually have a bit of an update to those listings we discussed yesterday. Now, I would highly recommend you watch Paul's video from yesterday if you haven't already seen it, because he goes through all the specifications and stuff in detail. But essentially, we had listings of the Ryzen 9 3800X, 3700X, and 3600X surface on a Turkish online retailer. And again, he does go through all the specs and stuff in that video, so go watch it. 
and it's literally yesterday that it was uploaded at the time of recording so go check that out if you want to know the specs but the important thing is I actually have a bit of an update thanks to one of our viewers a fellow by the name of Yalaz hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly now they very kindly called up the company a company by the name of Ebra and basically spoke to them about the listings and here is a direct quote from what he's emailed over to us quote Spoke with the retailer, it's not just an e-tailer, and it's actually brick and mortar shop. I shopped there before, and here's what they say. Launch at the end of May, stock expected late July or early August. All specs on site are from a local distributor, Arena Computer, most probably, as they are AMD's distributors here, but he did not specify. And he is 100% sure they are all 100% correct. They have no price info at the moment. Now that is very, very interesting information and actually lines up. The sorry, the launch date for Ryzen 3000 makes perfect sense because it lines up with Computex and then a launch in July, which, as you may recall, is what we've heard previously from our sources. But the most interesting part of what he said there is obviously the fact that they're confident, 100% confident, that they are correct, that being the specifications. Of course... They could be incorrect there, they could be working off incorrect information or outdated information without realising that is of course possible, but so they are 100% correct is supreme confidence, I would argue. So it's going to be interesting to see if this actually is true. Now, as Paul did point out yesterday, we don't know how many cores there was, these specs that were given were operating on, so we should still wait and see for the full reveal, but if they're true, Ryzen... 3000 is looking very, very impressive. We have one last AMD related thing before I move on to something from Nvidia. And we actually have some comments from Lisa Sue about the PlayStation 5. Now this is very much a hint, but it could be just a coincidence or something like that. Lisa Sue is very, very careful in the past to not reveal things or let things that she says kind of trip her up in the future. When the whole Radeon 7 thing happened, Everyone turned around and said, oh, you said this wasn't going to happen, and she quite rightly pointed out that she never said that. We did, as in the press. So, she's very careful when it comes to this sort of thing. So, I do think her, it's not a mistake on her part. Her wording, I think, is quite deliberate here. So, make it make of it what you will, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So, what did she actually say? She said, quote, So, yes, we are very pleased with our partnership and expanding our partnership with Sony on the next generation consoles. As we see the semi-custom business at this point, we still believe it's going to be down substantially in 2019. Let's call it approximately 20% plus. And then, as we go into 2020, without talking about any specific customer, we believe that semi-custom will return to a growth business for us in 2020 and beyond. So I'm sure you're getting you're getting what I'm getting at here. Bit of a fumbly word way to word it, but never mind. Anywho, so yeah, you know what I'm getting at. They're expecting a boost in the seven semi-custom business due to the launch of the PlayStation 5 and potentially the next Xbox. Of course, Sony have already said that we will not be seeing this before sorry, spring of next year. And Sony does tend to release their consoles as makes sense around Christmas time, obviously we saw sort of October slash November release in the past, so it would make perfect sense to see the PlayStation 5 release around that time, and if we are seeing the Xbox as well in 2020, which I would also expect, we'll most likely be seeing that as well. And we have already know, of course, that AMD are being used on both systems, of course Phil Spencer appeared at Computex for AMD, and of course Mark Cerny confirmed that we are seeing Zen 2 inside the PlayStation 5, so it makes perfect sense that with both next generation consoles using AMD hardware, semi-custom is going to be booming for AMD. But I promised you NVIDIA, and NVIDIA you shall get. Now this time we have a leak thanks to tweakers.net and this is a leak of Dell's latest roadmap and this seems to reveal that Nvidia are working on a Nvidia Quadro RTX mobility GPU or GPUs I suppose you should say which of course will use the Turing architecture. Now unfortunately there's no specs information here we can kind of, kind of glean and make estimated guesses as to the sort of performance we can expect based on the Radeon equivalent that is being listed for the two workstations on Dell's roadmap. So we have two workstations on the roadmap as you can see. We have the Precision 7540 and the Precision 7740. So for the 7540, the AMD graphics card being listed 
is the Radeon Pro WX4150, which is roughly on the same sort of level as the RX460. So, given that we're going to be seeing the TU106 architecture being used here for the Quadro, it is going to be faster than what we see on the Radeon side. Just kind of give you a rough idea of the performance. And the same again for 7740, we see Radeon Pro WX7100, which is a Polaris 20 GPU, roughly on the same level as the 580. And again, we're going to be seeing TU104 GPU architecture, which again would be much faster than the Radeon counterpart. So again, we don't know any information really. We can only make assumptions and educated guesses as to their performance based upon the AMD equivalent, as I've already said. But still, this pretty much, not confirms, but it looks pretty likely that we're going to be seeing mobility GPUs in the Quadro RTX lineup. So when are we going to see those unveiled by NVIDIA? It's tough to say. They haven't done any grand unveilings for any of their previous mobile touring GPUs, so I would just expect the information to be launched whenever NVIDIA so desires, but of course I could be wrong. Anywho, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.